Hi everybody, Mary Mitchell here, how are you? Okay, so I'm at our home in Southwest Florida. I'll be here for a while. So in, in um, I don't really have any alcohol ink supplies here and I'm still exploring this medium and really, really liking it, uh, having fun with it. And the last time I did a video was, um, the most recent one was the, was the birch trees. I did. I wasn't able to demonstrate um, exactly how I did it as much as um, explain how I did it. I didn't. Um, I didn't record it. Is what I mean. I did record some demo demonstration about the different ways you can use alcohol ink. But um, and there's you know lots of other videos out there um, that you you know I would urge you to to uh, to check out. So in the meantime, I had I did this piece right here. Now this is again just like the just like the birch trees that I did last, uh, and I did it I did it again because I did it I wanted to show you how I did it, and I didn't need with this one I didn't need my airbrush gun I didn't need my um, I didn't need my um, blow dryer I did not need um, anything that you know a straw, uh, whatever you want, anything to push it around with, except a paintbrush uh, that are actually refillable, that you can fill the cartridge in and uh, a cartridge with your ink, with a little bit of um, uh, isopropyl alcohol if you want, 91% and higher, I believe works the best. I haven't tried uh, anything lower because it's not recommended. And, uh, you know, when I'm trying something, especially the first time, I try to, uh, to do it as, as they recommend. Um, so what I did is I, uh, I bought a few of those refillable uh, paintbrushes that you put your, your ink in, and they come in the, the um, paintbrushes come in various widths and sizes. And um, I used it for white, uh, mostly white. I would probably use it for blue, but I, I really wouldn't use them for every color of alcohol ink because I don't use every color as much as I use other, certain other colors. So, um, so let's get back to this piece and then, and then I'll just, I wanna just uh, talk about a few safety issues. Now I did this piece out on our lanai and it's literally, uh, there's only one wall that's, that's not um, screened in. There's a fan overhead that I have constantly moving when I'm out there doing this, and I can't smell the alcohol at all. I also used a very, very little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol, um, and that helps too, but you have to be very careful with the fumes. Um, research safety, uh, guys, research safety, because isopropyl alcohol um, is dangerous. You know, it's flammable. It, uh, if you breathe it in, you can hurt yourself. Um, so make sure that wherever you do this, hopefully you know, I'm lucky. I can, you know, have a, a space here in Florida where I can sit outside and do it and not, not worry because there's, in, you know, there's circulation, the air is constantly circulating out there. Uh, but back in New York where it's cold and my studio is, is not as uh, such as the lanai is here, it's more challenging. So uh, just please, please, please study up on safety issues with alcohol inks and the precautions that you need to take, especially a respirator mask, okay? So having said that, let's go over what I've done. And um, this is what you're gonna see uh, me do. I did some of this without recording it, but I, d I, d I saved enough until I got my recording equipment and some other things that I needed to uh, finish record, finish this piece and record it at the same time. So this is um, a piece of opaque plastic, um, graphics I think it is, and uh, it's 12 by 12, and I blotted in the colors that I wanted using paper towels and, believe it or not, a cosmetic uh, cotton pad. Okay, so you can, you can use anything really. Um, and then I did, uh, uh, because I wanted some depth, I wanted some uh, 3D, I did this piece. Now this is a clear piece of 12 by 12. This is all 12 by 12 sheets of plastic, okay? And um, you can see what I did. And that goes 
much like the last piece. I used a little bit of different color background though and a different bit of, a bit of a layout. So that goes like that. Okay, so that's piece number two. And then the, the piece, the big, you know, uh, main piece right here, the trees, I actually um, used a glue gun to, uh, for, the, um, for the shapes. Would I do it again? Probably not, but I don't regret doing it. Um, I, I look forward to using a, more of a glue gun in the future on some of my pieces, but I wanted to see how it would look, and it really did give it an extra uh, kind of, um, you know, more of a three-dimensional even. And then finally, um, I just did it. I didn't know if I was going to want to use this, but this is another clear sheet of paper. I don't know if you can see it, but I, I put some sunset yellow, I think it was called, and some brass together, and I put it on uh, with a very heavy hand, and then I took it off with a very heavy hand. But there's enough on here that it gives the piece just enough to soften it and give it kind of a glowy feel. Uh, so then what we have, we put it all together and then we have this, okay? So I'm going to go over this with you. I'm going to do a voiceover because I did all of this outside. It was uh, breezy, windy, uh, people were talking, people were laughing. So I couldn't talk to you while I did this. So I'm going to have to go now go over what I have edited, all the recordings, all done, and uh, talk over it and walk you through it. And I look forward to uploading this. And I would urge you to please ask me any questions at all. Um, I don't care what it is. Uh, just, just comment to say hi, please. Thank you. Uh, and I want to thank those of you who have subscribed so far. I'm, I'm at 366, which I think is great. Um, not trying to go viral here, but just trying to pass along what I've learned from people and hopefully you'll learn as well. So let's get moving and I'll be right back. Okay, so let's get started. These are the supplies. I, I laid them out. It's not everything, but um, you see I have some alcohol blending solution. Um, I have so the three alcohol ink uh, inks that I use, the pen, the um, Sharpie, those are my Master's Touch um, alcohol ink pens, uh, a case for me to put my um, alcohol inks in, paper towels. I don't have the cosmetic uh, pads out there, but the pens that you that are refillable pens. I mean, you're not looking at it right now. This is the painting finished. And so let's get started with the rest. Um, this is the opaque sheet that I began with. And this is the second sheet that goes on top. And then there's the third sheet I showed you. Uh, now this, these, all these sheets are going, are going to be changed. I thought the trees looked too crowded and that they were I couldn't see the background. I couldn't see enough of the blue or the green. All I could see were trees. So I decided to make some changes. So the first thing that I did was to uh, finish filling in the, um, the green and the blue for the leaves and the sky and the ground um, of the, the little forest. I guess you could call it the birch tree forest. And I'm dabbing in my, uh, I'm using lime green and I'm using, um, I forget what the other one is, but I'll put the colors in the description because I went uh, back and forth between two, between the uh, Bria Reese and also the Pinata. And um, they look very similar, except that the Pinata had a lot more pigment in it. So, um, but where I didn't want that much pigment, the other came in handy. So again it depends on what you're what you're trying to achieve so I continue to dab it in you have to be very careful because if you adding you know just even just like this you can um, if I went over one of the trees for example and there was not quite enough pigment on it I could actually take it off it doesn't mean I can't put it back on again uh, which I did have to do in a couple of instances just to bring out some of the white uh, so you'll see that as I go along, the changes that I make. And I do, I'm making these throughout. I'm dabbing it in the middle, I'm dabbing it at the top um, on this second piece here to give it some, 
some some uh, depth. Now it looks like I don't know what happened, but I filled in the blue, and uh, I couldn't find that recording. I don't know what. I, maybe I didn't record it. But here's that uh, refillable um, paintbrush I wanted to sh tell you about. Uh, was talking to you about. You you put your ink in there as I showed you, and uh, you just kind of squeeze very gently, and the ink comes out, and you you paint just just as you you see me demonstrate right here. Um, you can control the flow, and uh, th these are great. I love these. I just bought a, a few more. They come in different sizes as well. Uh, the tips, the the paintbrush, just as any, just as a regular paintbrush would. And you clean them with isopropyl alcohol. The the ink wipes right off it. Uh, comes off clean right on uh, the paper towel. So here I have the sharpie. Now I bought the sharpie only because I needed to brighten up some of this white and. I didn't realize it, but I was happy to find out that this is also removable by using isopropyl alcohol as well. So, you know, using it in, in uh, small amounts uh, didn't hurt, didn't hurt the painting at all. In fact, it, uh, it helped it quite a, quite a bit. And in the parts where I wanted to take the trees out, uh, they did, did come off. So here I am putting some blues on, and I'm back onto the opaque sheet, and I'm filling in um, so that the color blue is deeper on this uh, sheet. So what I have in mind here is to finish uh, dabbing in the colors that I want. Very, you know, just just dabbing them in there, no stress. Um, randomly putting them in where I think they should go. And then uh, changing then to the sheet that goes on top of that and adding more to give it a, an even deeper feeling. Um, and I'm doing all of this and in the back of my head I'm looking at it as I'm going along and a lot of what I have left out are the times where I actually put the sheets uh, on top of each other um, carefully uh, to see what it looks like and if there are is if there's anything in there that I need to take out using the isopropyl alcohol. I did a freeze on that because that is um, pinata brass and that is, you know, I, I kept hearing people say that that's better than gold and it is just a gorgeous color. It is, it is like gold. It's beautiful. So I took that and I decided to put some bling in here and, uh, you know, just sort of make it uh, pop out. Um, and um, I put it on my um, cotton pad there and I'm dabbing it around and uh, you have to be very careful with this because when this goes on the plastic sheet it stays there <laughs> uh, it, it's hard to it's not like uh, something that's very fluid you know these actually have uh, I believe uh, mica uh, particles in them and once you place them on the sheet um, you know it's um, it's again, it's a, it's something that's on there, and you have to wipe pretty hard to get it off. So you want to be be careful how you apply this. Um, and as I found out with the final sheet, uh, it was not as easy to get off as I had hoped. But it, anyway, live and learn. So I'm going back over uh, the greens, adding some more of that in different color greens. At one point earlier, you saw me hold up the markers because I used the, uh, some of the greens in that set to also um, include uh, on the top sheet as well as the middle sheet, wherever I wanted to put it. They have some really pretty greens in there and they worked really well with this painting. So I just keep testing it and put, putting it on top, seeing how it looks. Um, and, you know, again, and I'm, I'm still looking at them going, no, there's too many trees. I still haven't achieved what I want to achieve, and that is, you know, first I thought there wasn't enough, so I kept adding them, and now it's time for me to start removing them. So I start cleaning it up, holding it up, seeing where there's some marks, you know, where I don't want them to be. And what you see me using here is a, um, a blending pen. Now, you know, when you use a blending pen, you, that's... You know, it's, it's got alcohol in it, and so you can lift color off, you can lift the ink off the pigment using it. Um, then I switch to the isopropyl alcohol that I have in one of those uh, little plastic bottles, which are uh, a must-have for me anyway, uh, putting it on the paper towel, and I'm rubbing it off. And now remember, this is one of the trees that did have 
some of the Sharpie ink, white ink on it, and it does come off. So I'm, using, I'm going back and forth between the uh, blending pen, which uh, is used for blending, but also I use it in some of the hard to reach spots to get out, uh, to, to lift off the, some pigment, which is what I'm doing here. So this was um, a process and I would put it on, I had to look at it, I had to make sure that the plastic uh, was clear where I you know, removed the color. And um, I had to do it a few times because it's, uh, um, you know, it, it's not, uh, I, it's easy, I'll, I'll put it that way, but you, you really have to just go over to make sure that uh, there's no residue uh, that's going to impede your, you know, the aesthetic value of uh, your, your piece here. So I want it really clean. I want to see right through it and not have to have it uh, hazy from any white uh, or dark that's left over. So I'm looking at it now and I'm saying, well, there, I still, you know, you can see me in my hand there, kind of going, hmm, uh, no, I'm thinking I want to take some more out. So here I am focused on the right. I'm going to clean that up and go over that and, uh, you know, make that, um, take all of that that stuff off there and uh, so uh, as I said so I'm doing that and um, as you're doing it you just have to be careful they, it dries rather quickly but it can be a little tacky so you don't um, so it's tricky you have to be careful where you place your hands and how you're doing it you don't want to you know spread the ink uh, by touching it and spreading it to other parts of the painting so it's looking a little better but it's still not exactly what i want and i'm pointing to the parts as you can see in here me contemplating and looking at it and thinking okay well the trees in the background maybe they need to be shorter maybe they shouldn't come all the way down to the bottom so there I start, I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, okay, that would make sense that the trees in the background wouldn't come all the way down to the bottom, uh, like the painting, like the trees in the very front would. So I start to remove those, uh, bottom part of, the, of those trees. And then I, after I do it, uh, I go back over the part that I've taken off with the green and uh, to fill that back in with um, the, you know, the, the leaves, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, flow, the, um, the ground or the, um, or the leaves. Anyway, you get my point here. So I do that uh, and I was very happy with that result. Very happy with that. But I don't stop there. I, as I uh, looking as I'm looking at it, I, I think that uh, it has to be done with another one or two trees. Uh, at this point that I'm looking at, I don't remember exactly, but you'll see as I'm doing it, I take uh, I shorten one or two more so that it's more realistic and it, it makes more sense that way. And um, and it was a good thing. I, it was really it worked out really well for this for this piece. It made a lot of sense and it. Help the, help the colors from the background come to the foreground and make the, the foreground uh, uh, stand out more. So it worked great. So now I'm getting into my alcohol markers. Um, now there's different brands. I have Copic at home. These are, um, these are Master's Touch, which I got from Hobby Lobby. I'm seriously happy with these. And they have a couple of a uh, few different uh, types of uh, green shades of green here, and um, I was able to use three different kinds, and I loved the effect that they gave. They come off. This comes off as well with isopropyl alcohol, of course, um, but they filled in the spots that were hard to reach with the um, the uh, the cotton pad or the uh, paper towel. They got, they were able, I was able to get in those hard to reach spots with these markers and they're phenomenal. I love them. I love them. I, I just uh, think they're the, they're the greatest things. But these don't come in white. Um, if they do, I couldn't find them. Maybe out there on the internet somewhere. I'll take a look. I, I tried, but uh, um, maybe I went to the right wrong, wrong parts. But I got my pinata uh, white today, so... 
I'm happy about that. <laughs> so I'll go back to go back to that. But it's good to know that when you do want to brighten things up, you do have the option of using the Sharpie and uh, not worrying about that. And, you know, the other thing is I tried using, um, I was thinking about the ground and I was contemplating, uh, do I want to put a little bit of an autumn feel in here and maybe use um, sort of a soft uh, rust kind of red, uh, almost like the leaves are falling, and I decided against it. Um, I tried it. I, I think I left that part out. I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, I didn't like how it looked, and uh, I went with these colors, very simple, very basic, because they all worked well together, and I love the the way, uh, the brightness of, of all these colors, um, how they are together. Just, um, I really wanted to give it a, a sort of a happy spring feel, you know, <laughs> coming out of winter here. So as I go along with my pen here, I'm, I'm filling it in. And it's interesting because this color was just being absorbed into these, um, you know, as I went along, they just, it wasn't, it was going down white, but it wasn't staying as white as I, uh, as it looked when I first put it down. So that's why I then resorted to the Sharpie. It really saved the day, I have to say. Um, I'll be interested to see, now that I have my uh, pinata uh, white, to see how that works out. Um, so now I'm back to the Sharpie again, and I'm just dabbing it in, being very careful. Um, I, again, I still don't want to use too much of this. And I'm going back and forth, and I'm, I'm looking also at this, and I'm thinking to myself, do I need to get rid of any more trees? <laughs> I'm really liking the way the background is, and I, I want to see it. I don't want to see all white. I want to see the, uh, the sky and uh, the leaves and such. So I'm here I'm looking at it again. I know this is redundant, but stick with me here because I want you to know how, I want you to see how easy it is to fix, you know, maybe not a mistake, but to change your mind about something. And you can see already as you look at this painting toward the right where you can see the background so much better than it was before. It was really crowded. It lost, it was losing something in the translation. And now as I look at the left side, I'm, I'm thinking about that side as well. And I did make the decision to, um, to modify the left side as well and take out a part of the tree uh, that's on the left side, uh, second one to the left, and, and I, I took a, one of those big branches out. And I think after that, I pretty much left it. So I think, <laughs> we'll find out as we go along here. Um, <clears throat> but you get the point, is um, you can make this what you want, and uh, that's just the best thing about this. Okay, so I'm taking my black uh, alcohol ink marker pen set that I have here from Master's uh, Choice from Hobby Lobby, and I'm putting in the, uh, the black lines that are characteristic of birch trees. Uh, sometimes I put them in and then I take them out. Sometimes I put them in and I get, take this, the uh, blending pen and I smooth them down. I'm trying to give this a, uh, a cylinder, you know, sort of a, a round feel because these trees are, you know, round. <laughs> okay, so here I am taking out another tree. I take out uh, this one and I do take out one more that you, I, um, I identify with a text and I point to it <laughs> um, in that frame. But um, you can see, you can see just how easy it is. And uh, when you go over it, you just kind of hold it up to the light and make sure that there's no residue on there. And then I go back over it with the, uh, with the green ink and the, uh, the blue ink and dab it in again to fill it in. And that's how easy it is. And um, you, know, you just have to use your judgment. You have to look at this and, uh, and it's a process. Um, and uh, you just go through it and uh, you make your decisions as you move along. Um, and the good news is this stuff is so easy to work with. It's challenging, but at the same time, um, it's, it's, uh, 
rewarding, and um, once you get the hang of it, it's, it's not bad at all. It's easy. Um, sometimes it can be a little frustrating, I won't lie, but, you know, it's all part of it. It's, uh, the benefits far outweigh any downside to this medium. Um, so, you know, I use the, the black marker, the master's touch black markers throughout all of them, and I didn't record that because there was really no point in that. It would have taken forever. So, um, okay, so there I am. I'm, I do take out another tree. Um, I'm taking my markers and I'm filling in the very top uh, sheet now. Um, I removed some of it because I found out that I actually went a, up a little bit too high. But again, just just swiping it down with some um, some isopropyl alcohol and uh, having it make sense. And uh, so you're just going back and forth and back and forth, taking a look at it and uh, make your decisions as you're as you're moving along. Okay, so we're coming to the end here now. Um, after this, it's going to be the next day, and overnight I had decided that I would do one final um, sheet, a plastic sheet. So um, my, also um, my, um, some more supplies came. But anyway, I decided to change the angle of the camera as well. So here I am um, liberally applying the yellow and, and just rubbing it around the entire 12 by 12 sheet here of plastic. And um, I should have left it here. I really should have just left it alone here. But what do I do? Well, I decide more is better. Well, that's not always the case. Okay, but the good news is you can fix your mistakes. And, um, and I do. <laughs> so I look at this and I like it. I decide, let's put some, let's really get into it and put some at the top. Really, you know, make that top uh, really kind of uh, stand out, really pop out. So, I, so you can see here what I'm doing. I'm, I'm adding it and I'm dabbing it. And immediately I'm, seeing, I'm thinking, this is not going to work. I know this is not going to work. I tried to. I tried to force it to work, but uh, I know it's not going to. Um, I pursue it anyway. I keep trying. And eventually I realized that uh, I've got I've to take this off. This isn't going to work. I've got to fix this whole thing and, uh, and um, get it off here because it looked terrible when I placed it on top of the painting, as you will see shortly you will say, yeah, get rid of that. <laughs> That's not working. <laughs> no, no way. So I'm stubborn. Sometimes I just, you know, sometimes I'll push it and push it until I finally have to say, you know, you cry uncle. So uh, there I am, and it's like, uh, here you're about to see. And I say, no, right away you could see no. So I take uh, some isopropyl alcohol from the little, um, you know, tube of, uh, that I have there, and uh, which was, I was saying, you really don't need a lot. So don't go crazy with this stuff. You don't need a lot. Um, and again, I'm, I'm outside doing this entire painting. So I had a lots and lots of uh, air around me and the fan above me going. So I really, uh, this was just, this is a perfect place to do this uh, type of work, artwork. So there I am, feverishly <laughs> scrubbing this off, thinking to myself, oh man, uh, you know, <laughs> live and learn, <laughs> right? I mean, come on, live and learn. I've done worse, far, far worse. So I continue even after this ends, and it's about to end in a few, few seconds here. I continue doing it because I was trying to get all the residue off and I wanted still more off, and here we go. It's done. It's done, guys. Woohoo! Uh, I love it uh, when you see it in the sun, um, and you see how the, how just that little bit reflects the entire painting. Um, I was so glad that I that I did what I did with it. Um, I I kept it on, but I I modified it a lot. It took a lot off, but I left enough on that it just gives it a nice, soft, ethereal feel to it. And I'm going to buy a frame. It's, uh, I think it's called an invisible frame. And uh, place this between two pieces of glass with the frame around it so it's, it looks like it's suspended. And um, 
I can't wait to do that. And uh, I'll take a picture of that and put it on my, uh, my website. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.